Let's get one thing straight. Robots don't have feelings. They don't get happy or frustrated or scared. But here's the wild part. They are learning to recognize our feelings and they're getting scarily good at it. That one little fact, it's about to change, well, pretty much everything. So let me just ask you this straight up. What if a machine, your phone, your car, maybe even a robot in your house knew exactly how you were feeling just by looking at you? And no, this isn't some far off science fiction plot anymore. This is a real and rapidly growing field of technology. The whole goal is to give machines something like emotional intelligence. It's got a pretty official sounding name, effective computing. But what it really boils down to is this, building systems that can see, interpret, and even mimic human emotions. The idea is to teach them how to decode all our signals from the look on our face to the tone of our voice and even our own biometric data. Okay, so how in the world does a hunk of metal and code do that? Well, it all starts by looking for secrets that we give away constantly without even knowing it, right on our own faces. The whole technology is built on this really fascinating biological quirk we all have called micro expressions. Now, these are super fast, tiny little muscle movements that flash across our face in a fraction of a second. The key word here is involuntary. You can't control them. They're these little windows into our true, unfiltered feelings before our brain even has a chance to put on a mask. So, how do you teach a computer to read something that happens so fast? Well, scientists basically created a dictionary for the face. It's called the Facial Action Coding System, or FACS. They went through and painstakingly categorized every single muscle movement into what they call action units. So, for example, pulling your lip corners up, that's action unit 12, a smile. Throwing your brow, that's AU4, a frown. The AI is then fed millions and millions of labeled images, and it just learns to connect the dots figuring out which combination of these action units means you're happy or sad or surprised. So that's the human side of the equation, but let's flip it around. How does the AI actually see all of this? What's going on from its point of view? It's got a pretty powerful toolkit. Computer vision is its eyes. Facial landmark tracking is how it maps everything out. And deep neural networks, well, that's the brain, the part that learns all the patterns from those huge data sets we just talked about. So to do all this, the AI doesn't just see a face, it maps it. Typically, it places a mesh of key points, often 68 of them, just like you see here. It tracks the exact position of your eyes, your eyebrows, your nose, your mouth, and it measures every tiny little twitch and movement. And this is where it all comes together. The AI takes that unique pattern of movements on your face and compares it against its massive library of millions of other faces. It's playing a super high-speed matching game and then it makes an educated guess, spitting out a probability score, something like joy, 92%, or surprise, 75%. And hey, it doesn't just stop with the face. The really advanced systems are what you call multimodal. That means they're pulling in data from all over to get a more complete picture. They're analyzing the pitch and speed of your voice, your body posture, and even biometric stuff like your heart rate. Now, this might all sound a little bit like it's from a movie, but this technology is already being used out there in the real world. Let's take a look at where you can find Emotion AI in action. Take education, for example. AI tutors could totally change the game. Imagine a system that knows the exact moment a student is getting frustrated or confused. It could instantly adjust the difficulty or pop up with a hint, making learning way more personal. Or think about healthcare. Social robots are being used in elderly care homes to provide companionship, which is huge, but they can also monitor emotional well-being, maybe even flagging the early signs of depression or loneliness so a human caregiver can step in. How about customer service? AI assistants could make those interactions feel a lot more, well, human. If you can tell you're stressed out, the system could change its tone and response to help calm things down, instead of just repeating, I don't understand. And this one, this is a big one, safety. Imagine an industrial robot working next to a person. If that robot could detect panic or fear on the operator's face, it could be programmed to stop dead in its tracks. That's not just a cool feature. That could literally prevent a horrible accident before it even starts. So, for all this incredible, life-changing potential, this technology also brings us to a really serious crossroads. Are we using this to build a deeper connection with our technology? Or are we building technology that's just way better at controlling us? We have to remember, this tech is nowhere near perfect. It can totally misread facial expressions from cultures that weren't in its training data. 
Sarcasm? Forget about it. It has no clue. And it can easily confuse emotions that look similar on the surface, like mistaking deep concentration for anger. Bottom line? It doesn't actually understand anything. And that really leaves us with this two-sided coin. On one side, you have all this amazing promise. Safer workplaces, personalized help, better services. But on the other flip side of every single one of those is a serious risk. Constant surveillance, algorithmic bias, privacy invasion, and even emotional manipulation. And that brings us to maybe the most important point of all. You have to remember this. Robots don't feel emotions. They just mimic understanding. This is an empathy we're talking about. It's just really, really sophisticated pattern recognition. So, as these emotionally aware machines get woven deeper and deeper into our lives, we're left with a huge question. Is this technology going to help us connect more meaningfully with our digital world? Or is it just going to make that world much, much better at influencing and controlling us? The answer? Well, it's being written as we speak.